Today I'll talk about the hackathon project I did uh, a little over a year ago, in which we tried to create a video using data science techniques. Uh, I did a project together with uh, Tzach, who, who will also give the next lecture, uh, Neta, Yael, and Ofer. And if you have any questions during my talk, feel free to ask. The outline of my talk will be the hackathon project. I'll discuss what we tried to achieve, what data sets we had, but more importantly, what data sets we hadn't and how we compensated for it. And in the middle, I'll discuss about two uh, problems of general interest. The one is speaker recognition. I mean, I have a audio a recording of a person. How do I know which person it is? And semantic sentence similarity, in which I have two sentences and I want to uh, figure out how, clo how close is their uh, semantic meaning. So let's start. The problem I, uh, we're trying to solve is there aren't enough Simpsons episodes. Uh, th this sounds a bit ridiculous. Why? There, when we did the product, there were 20 se 27 seasons. Now there are 29. They have, we have hundreds of episodes. Simpsons is actually one of the longest running series out there. So. I'm saying that are, there aren't enough episodes. How can that be? There are a lot of episodes, but there aren't episodes on each and every subject I want. And what do I mean by that? If I want to watch an episode in which Homer uh, meets his long lost brother, uh, designs a new car and gets his brother bankrupt, I can, I can, there's an episode like that and I can watch him. But if I invent something new, for example, uh, Homer and Marge go bowling, and, and Marge wins, and Homer feels really bad about himself, so he goes back to college. This episode probably wasn't, wasn't produced. So this is a real problem. So our goal was given a script to automatically create a new Simpsons episode. Uh, uh, this goal is a bit ambitious, and I'll give you a little spoiler alert. We failed. But we got a lot closer than you would have expected. So let's start. How do you create a Simpsons episode? To do that, we need animation. We need to have the character. We need to know how it moves, how it behaves, how to look at the character from each and every side. We need to do this for all the characters, uh, understand how they, inter they interact with each other, have the background, and have the audio synced to the to the motion, and it is a lot of this is a lot of hard work. But I'm not an animator. I don't know how to do this stuff. I'm a data scientist, so I'll use data scientist uh, data science techniques in order to solve this problem. So what's the idea? The idea is to use sub existing sub scenes as building blocks for new scenes, and and I'll give an example. Imagine I write a script, and the script, I have Homer saying, I want dinner. Marge answers, all we have is beer. And Homer answers, I love beer. This probably didn't appear in any Simpsons episode. But Homer saying, I want dinner, might have appeared in one episode. Marge saying, all we have is beer, might have appeared in a different episode. And Homer saying, I love beer, probably appeared in many episodes. So all I need to do is take these a little blocks of a video, put them together, and I'll have my new episode. So why do we use Simpsons? First of all, it's a great show. But more importantly, there is a lot of data. There are 20, 29 seasons. This means that I have a lot of sub scenes to pick for. But more than that, it's a cartoon. So the characters don't age and they don't change their clothes. This means that I can take a sub scene from the second season and glue it together with a sub scene from the 26th season and we won't notice the difference. It, it, it's something that I just can't do with, uh, with human actors. And moreover, as that the speech is imperfect because their, their cartoons are not real people, and I'll, go, I'll, I'll dig into this a little bit later. So, how do we start? 
the most important thing here is to index the scenes. I need to know for each and every sentence the Simpson said, what was said, and when exactly was it said. So I need the times in order to cut the video. So where can I find this data form? Uh, we need to cut the videos. Well, uh, the, the simplest, the, the most direct approach is speech to text. I have the audios of the, of the episodes. I can use my favorite uh, speech to text program and have the text itself. Okay, this can work, uh, but uh, first of all, speech to text usually has errors inside, so it won't be perfect. And more than that, uh, I'll remind you that we did this on a hackathon and we had only two days and this may, may take a long running time, so uh, we didn't do that. We, so another option is we can watch all the Simpsons episodes. If we watch all the episodes, we can just write down what the character said, time when each character said it, and have the, exactly the data that we want. This is really fun, but it does take a lot of time. But what if someone already did this for us? And someone has. And I'm, of course, talking about the people who wrote the subtitles. In the subtitles, I have what was said and in which times exactly it was said. So this is what I need in order to cut the scenes. There's only one little thing that is missing here. Subtitles don't include the speaker. I know that eh, this sentence was said. I don't know which character said it. So I need to comp compensate for this. So how will I do it? Again, there are a lot of options. First of all, I can use the text itself. If the text says, hi, I'm Lisa, I know what the character, what the character is. If the text says, hi, Lisa, I know that the other character in the dialogue is Lisa. Uh, this is possible, but it's pretty hard uh, because the uh, signal uh, through the words is, uh, is pretty weak and the data isn't really cut into dialogue, so it requires a lot of work. So we didn't do that. Another op option is to use the image itself. Usually when a character speaks, you can see it on the screen. So all I need to do is create some kind of a face detection mechanism that will detect the character and I'll know who the speaker is. Uh, this is a really cool approach, but it's a little hard to do it in Hackathon, so we didn't do it. But uh, later, one of my team members, uh, Tzach, did it as a side project, and you'll hear about this approach later in the next talk. The third approach is using the speech, the speech itself. Well, the characters have voices, so we can, maybe we can identify the voice. So how, how can we do it? First of all, we need labeled data. Uh, if I have labeled data, I, I might be able to train some kind of machine learning algorithm to uh, recognize the speaker. Uh, we did find a few episodes that had a full script. In the script, we had the speakers. So all we need had to do is align the subtitles with the script, and we have labeled data. OK, this is nice. Uh, the next thing is the training data. The training data is the audio we extract from the videos. But what are the features? How can we define features on audio that will help us recognize the speaker? Uh, there are a lot of methods to do this. Uh, deep learning is probably the way to go if you have a lot of time and a lot of processing power. But if you don't have, there's another method. Okay, It's called Mel Sepson features. And what is this? It's basically a method given an audio signal to extract features from it. How does it go? The first stage is take the Fourier transform of the signal. Basically, I have an audio signal. I, I do the Fourier transform and get the frequencies. The second part is I map the powers to the mill scale. Uh, this is basically a monotone transformation. It's not really interesting. Uh, it's basi what, bas what basically it does, it moves the units of the signal to have it in closer to the range of the human voice, but we can ignore it from now because it's not really interesting. 
the third step is I take the logs of the frequencies, and then I do a discrete cosine transform, which is basically another Fourier transform. So what do we have here? A Fourier transform, a log, and another Fourier transform. And why is this useful? The raw signal uh, encodes information only on the, on the voice itself, how loud it is. And that, that is a very weak signal to identify the speaker. If I do the, uh, the first Fourier transform, what I get is the frequencies. And we know that frequencies have much more information about the speakers. For example, women tend to uh, talk with high pitch and, and males tend to talk with low pitch. So this is better. But the third part is after I do the second Fourier transform, it's basically the frequencies of the frequencies. Or you can think about it as how the frequencies change. This has information that regards to the vocal cords and the throat. And it's basically a signature of the, uh, the physiology of the speaker. And this has a lot of information. Uh, calculating this is a bit tricky. So uh, Python to the rescue. And we can just pip install our package, Python speech features. We read the WAV file. We run the MFCC uh, function. And we have the features. That's it. Really, really simple. Uh, so now we have the features. We can define the features on small uh, time frames. We can run the prediction on each and every time frame and combine the predictions. And using uh, multi-class logistic regression, we got around 80% accuracy on four labels. The labels are Homer, Marge, Lisa, and Bart. Uh, Maggie doesn't speak, so uh, no labels for, uh, for her. Cool. So now we know the speaker. But we encountered another problem there isn't enough data. And what do I mean by not enough data? If I want uh, my characters to say a specific sentence, the sentence doesn't necessarily appear in my data set. So what can I do? I have two approaches here. The first approach is use text-to-speech. Well, the, uh, if the sentence doesn't appear, I can generate the, the, the voice of the character and just put it on the episode. Uh, but this is tricky. Why? Because I need to choose which video I want to use. So if I want a sentence with five words, I need to find uh, the, when the character said, said a sentence with five words. And I want the length of the words to be similar in both sentences. And maybe I want the uh, vowels in the words in the in the words to be similar. So this this ca this approach can work. The problem with it is that we all know the Simpsons. We all know how the, how they sound. So if we will use text to speech, the characters will sound different and weird and unnatural. So we didn't do that. Instead, we decided not to use the exact sentence we want but define the most similar sentence in our training set. So now we have another problem. How can we define two sentences that have a similar semantic meaning? Okay. For that, we'll use the, something that's called the word mover distance. It's related to the earth mover distance, if you're familiar with it. And it's basically this idea. Assume we have two sentences. Obama speaks to the media in Illinois, and the president greets the press in Chicago. The first thing I do is I throw out all the stop words. The stop words are those little words that don't convey any meaning, like to, the, in. So we throw them away. Now we take the remaining words, and we project them using word to vec on the embedding, uh, on the embedding space. What do we know about the embedding space? In the embedding space, if we have uh, two words with similar semantic meaning, they'll get two uh, close vectors. So, how can I define the distance between the two uh, between the two uh, sentences? I'll just add the uh, distance from Obama to President, from Speaker speaks to Greeks, from Illinois to Chicago, and from media to press. I'll sum the distances up. And this will be the distance between these two sentences. Uh, this isn't that simple. 
Why? Because in this example, I knew that I want to match Obama to president, but I don't really know that in the beginning. So this is actually an optimization problem. An optimization problem that I need to choose which uh, word to pass to which word. And this can be uh, defined as a linear program and solved very efficiently. And uh, if I have a different number of words in the sentences, it's still no problem. I just weight the words uh, accordingly and it works the same. So now we have an example. I have uh, two uh, sentences. Obama speaks to the media near Illinois and the band gave a concert in Japan. And I wanted to see which of these sentences is the closest to the president's greet the person in Chicago. So I compare uh, Obama to president and the distance is 0 0.45 and the band to president is 0 0.49. Speaks to greet is 0 0.24 and it's much closer than gave to greet, which is 0 0.42. And I do this for all the words and sum up. And I can see that D1 is closer to D0 than D2. So I conclude that D1 is closer semantically to D0. So if I need to choose one of them, I'll choose D1. Uh, something really nice about this method. Okay, before that, uh, and how do we implement this? Uh, again, Python to the rescue. Uh, Gensim, uh, the, the package has a very nice uh, model to calculate this. Uh, how does it work? I have two sentences. I do a very simple preprocessing, which is basically lower to the case and to throw away stop words. I need to load my embedding file. There's a, there are a lot of uh, files I can download. And calculate model Nikoda words mover distance between the two sentences. That's it. It's really simple. One thing I like about this method, it has no hyperparameters and it works very well out of the box. Here are examples we use. We try to look for go to bed and we found go to sleep. Uh, your father said eat your carrot. Your mother said eat your broccoli. We had lunch and we had dinner. You missed lunch, you missed breakfast. Uh, and we can see that the, word, the sentences have similar meanings, which is really, really nice. Okay, we're getting towards the end. And I remind you that it was a hackathon project and we were running out of time. And one of the things we encountered was that if we use the speaker recognition, uh, our data basically uh, cuts, uh, gets cut by 85%. Uh, Why? Because if I want to Homer to say a specific sentence, I need to classify all the sentences and find only when Homer says it. And Homer is, there are four characters and some other characters. So basically I lose 85% of the data for the speaker recognition. Uh, and we didn't really have the entire uh, 27 seasons. We had uh, two and a half. Uh, so we decided to ignore the speaker and to do something else. It, we call it a Simpson style text. And what do I mean by that? Just given a text, see how the Simpsons would have said it. And for that, uh, we used, we asked help from the one and only Britney Spears. Uh, I'll show you the demo. And what we'll see here is Britney uh, singing uh, Hit Me Baby one more time. But after each line Britney sings, we'll find one of the Simpsons characters says the, a sentence which is, has the, uh, the, lowest, the highest semantic similarity to what Britney just sung. Okay. Oh, baby. How was I supposed to know? Around, you know that. You know. That something wasn't right. Something that. Oh, baby, baby. Oh, baby. I shouldn't have let you go. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to have to let you go. <laughs> and now you're out of sight. Oh, so now you're super dad? <laughs> Could you tell me how it works? Tell me everything. Tell me everything.
Okay. So, thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, oh, that's a uh, wonderful question. Uh, the question was, in The Simpson, they, are, they have several voice actors that uh, dub the same characters. And this is right, but I've checked it, and the four main characters are uh, narrated by different uh, people. So it's okay. But very good question, and it shows a lot of familiarity with The Simpsons. <laughs> cool, thank you.